Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to show a model bus TCP communication test. And in this test, the Rockwell Allen Bradley Complex Logix will run as a model bus TCP server. And Siemens i7-1200 controller will run as a model bus TCP client. And I used a couple videos before to show how can we set up the model bus TCP server from the Allen Bradley side and also show how can we implement the Modbus TCP client from the Siemens side. You can review the previous video. I will paste the link under this video. To implement the Modbus TCP server function in the Allen Bradley side, so we need to download the AOI and then we need to import the runs, import the AOI. And once we import this AOI, it will show the Modbus TCP server function block like this. And this controller I'm using, that is a Compact Logix, and its IP is 192.168.1.101. And firstly, let's check out the Modbus TCP server side that setting. So let's go to the connection. Right click the parameter, click this monitor. And expand here. And this local slot that is zero, that means we are using the built in this Ethernet port from this Allen Bradley controller. So that is a 1969L33, this controller, this compact logic controller. And this port that index is zero. So we type in this local slot Ethernet port that is zero. And this local address. This controller IP address, that is 192.168.1.101, okay? And running as a server is local port, that is a 502, okay? This is the timeout, 60 seconds. This is the key parameter for running as a server. And then go back to this function block here. Keep in mind, we need to enable this application. And here, keep in mind, we need to enable this Modbus TCP server. So we need to set it to 1. Okay? And to check out the status, we can look at this status, active connections. And once this connection shows from 0 to 1, that means we set up the Modbus TCP connection. And the PLC data buffer, we can find from this Modbus data. So this is server underscore 01 underscore data. Right click monitor. And from the model bus side, so we will use the hold register. This is a 40,000, this address area. So if we expand here, so we will see the model bus data here. Okay. Now let's shift to the Siemens TI portal side. From the Siemens TI portal side, I'm using the controller i7-1211, this small controller. And the IP address of this controller, 192.168.1.201. So as I showed from the previous video, this controller will run as a Modbus TCP client function. Okay. And here, keep in mind, this Ethernet port, the system constant here, that is a 64. So to implement the Modbus TCP client, I programmed at this FC10. And to find this Modbus client function block, go to the communication, find out the others, find out the Modbus TCP. So to implement the Modbus TCP client function, we can drag this function block to here. And in this test, because I'm going to test the function, the Modbus TCP function 03, that's the read from the server to this client and write from this client to the server. So I implement two function and there are two instant DB here. So the first one, so this model bus mode, that is a zero. That means this client will read the data from the server to this client. And the next here, this one, that means this function block will run to write the data from this client to the server side. And from the read side, this model bus address will start from the 40,000 here and the length that is a 10 and the plc buffer that come from the db11 if we open that and this db11 here i set up two array one is a read buffer the unit that is a word and one is a write buffer the unit is word okay so this read buffer so i'm using this read buffer 
okay and go down so this right buffer i'm using this db11 this right buffer let's go to find out this connection setting so that connection setting come from this db10 and from the db10 those two function block they all using this tcom underscore ip underscore v4 this state type and from this state type we can check out the connection parameter here firstly this interface id so this is the same value i just shown that port system constants number 64 we need to type in here and the first read this connection that id is one and the second the id is two and this connection type we are using the modbus tcp that based on the tcp so here that's 11 that is the hex number so we type in the 0b 0b okay and because this is the client function that's why here this active established here we type in one that active this connection and this remote address so this ip address this is a client side ip address this is the 192.168.1.101 so 101, that is the hex number 65 here, here. And keep in mind, I just shown from the client side, we will use the remote port, that is 502. This side from the server side, so 502. Okay, this is the client connection parameters we need to set here. And to test the data communication, we can set up the watch table here. And in this watch table, I will drag this uh, Modbus TCP data, the read and the write buffer. And to monitor the read and the write buffer and set the data to the write buffer so we can use this watch table. And to organize this two function block, I'm using this M0.5, that is a one hertz clock. So when it's on, it will trigger this read. When it's off, it will trigger this write, this function block and this is right it will start from this 40 21 this modbus address and this length is 10 okay now let's download the program to the plc let's start it after the download okay from this watch table we can open this watch table turn this uh, monitor on so let's write some data here. This is a hex number, okay? We can prepare, for example, one, two, three, four. That is a hex. And next data, five, six, seven, eight. And the third one, AABB, transfer. Okay, so we send the data into this uh, write buffer. And that model bus function block, the second function block will write those data to the model bus server side. Okay, let's shift to the Alan Brandy side. Once we start this controller, we will see. So this connection, this active connection, it shows two, and it shows status accepted. So this active connection, if it's not equal to zero, that means this server has got communication. So we can watch that motor bus address this area. Click this server data, click this monitor. And because the writing, we will write into the motor bus address, that is a 4021. So we will scroll down, look at this area. So we shift to the hex area. So we will see, we receive the data correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and AABB here. And keep in mind here, from the Alan Brownlee, this AOI is internal, this index number, that is the one address off comparing with Modbus TCP address. So this 20 index as this PLC index number here, that actually means that is a Modbus address 21. That is a Modbus TCP that 40,021. Okay, so actually the address, they got a match here. And this zero here, that is the actual 4,001, that Modbus TCP address. So we send ABCD here, so we can write the data, for example, 1122. And this model bus TCP number two register 3344. So 5566. 
AABB AABB CCDD Okay, so we prepare the data from this server side and because from the CMN side and the first function block is reading the data from this Modbus TCP address number 1 to number 10 this area reading the data from this server to the client so let's go to the CMN side and verify Okay, after we shift here, so we can see the 1122, 3344, all those data, they transferred correctly. And if we review the function block, for this reading, so because we wrote this 40,000, this one, this first address here, and the length is 10, so this index one here, they match this 40,001, this address. And inside this read buffer, so if we quickly review, and our read buffer and the write buffer, we start from the one. So that allows this index number match with the mode bus address. So there's no one address off issues here. This is a read function block. And the write function block, we start from the 21 here. And this index number from this write buffer, it start from one. So that means this is the mode bus TCP address 40,021. And this is the 22, this is 23, following this way. And from this result here, we can see when it's communicating, so this value shows 7006. All right, using this way, we can see the Alan Brownlee side run as a model bus TCP server, and the Siemen side can run as a model bus client. So using this way, they can communicate some data. As we know, Siemens use the Perfinite field bus communication, and Alan Brownlee use Ethernet IP. This is a two different communication protocol. So in case in one system, this is Alan Brownlee, and uh, in one system, that is Siemens. So we can use the Ethernet port and the Modbus TCP method to exchange the data between the Siemens and Alan Bradley. And in this test, the Siemens run as a Modbus TCP client. This is the master, so it send the data or read the data. And from this Alan Bradley side, it run as a Modbus TCP server. This is very easy. So basically, the server side only need to prepare the data here waiting for the reading or writing. And in another video, I will show how can we implement the Modbus TCP client function at Alan Bradley Compact Logic this side, and how can we implement the Modbus TCP server Siemens controller side. Basically, this client and server role, they will reverse. I will use another video to show the test. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, Please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.